15 long. The Australian Open's been important for Djokovic as you see the Infinity player profile. It was here that he first debuted in a Grand Slam at age 17. Of course, had the breakthrough semifinal win over Federer at route to winning this title in 2008. Won 13 of the 14 sets he's played here in 2011. Thirty long. A bit of a tight start for Roger. Yeah. He's, you know, like I really think that a, a, a decision for him is, as you look at the path, which has been so impressive for Djokovic to get to this semifinal, is do I do I try to employ that offensive game more often, or do I use the backhand slice like he did for many many years, and obviously did it very effectively and effectively against Djokovic. Offensive firepower right off the bat there from Federer. During this tournament, Chris Djokovic had sort of one tricky match where he was a little bit flat, but otherwise he, he's been hitting the ball cleanly. He's been relaxed. And uh, boy, I think he's as primed as ever. The Burdich match was a strong statement. Boy. The man who hit him off the court at Wimbledon to 6-1 sets. Sandwiched around a tie break. Really strong stuff. That's it. So going for a lot on the second serve. We talked about the fact that he's really cut down on his doubles, but that wasn't against Federer. No, that's exactly right. And we see how, you know, matchups can make all the difference. Two consecutive doubles there. And both of them ultra aggressive. And Patrick, I think one thing that Roger always bangs on is guys getting out of their comfort zone, trying to do a little too much. That's right, Brad. We've seen it here. Five points play. Djokovic, who served a high percentage of the tournament, only one of five on the first serve. Rhythm is off on the serve. He missed that one badly. Second serve with an aggressive return, but full credit to Djokovic there for defending and then putting Federer on the defensive throughout that rally. You're right, Patrick. He was scrambling from the very first ball that Federer ripped. Tremendous hitting off the forehand wing from Novak in that rally. Shaky serving start, but being bold enough to really rip those forehands. One of the moments 
of importance early in this match for Djokovic. He was determined not to let Federer get right on top of him quickly. To hold even when the serve was shaky. Federer working with the American coach Paul Anacone, sipping the water in the center of the screen. Federer saying they haven't had a whole lot of time to work together because his schedule's been so busy, but they're kind of fitting him some some talks and some practice court sessions when they can. Well, we've definitely seen uh we, we like to call the Anacone effect in, in Federer's game. And uh, Roger played a lot of tennis after the U.S. Open, which is a little bit unusual for him back in the days when he was winning two, three majors a year. So that, to me, was a real signal that he wanted to make a big run in 2011 to get back to number one in the world. Roger Federer to say. Anacone's been so impressed by Federer's hunger at this stage in his career, willingness to work and change and listen to the fresh ideas. I think that's relatively new, to be honest. I mean, the guy was so successful, obviously. Really, in a lot of ways, Chris, just playing on instinct. Djokovic doesn't like to call. Challenge? Yeah, do you want a challenge? A little Djokovic late. Djokovic is challenging the call on the service line. But was called in. And Rick Molina in the chair, who was the chair umpire for the final a year ago. And it was out. We really gave him some leeway there, Molina. I thought to make that challenge came pretty late, but not to not to worry. Federer wins the first point on his serve. We've seen maybe too much leeway from chair umpires in this tournament, allowing guys to play a shot and then challenge. Fifteen all. Chris, one thing from a strategic point from Novak Djokovic, I think it's really important tonight that he stretches Roger to the forehand, not fear the forehand, actually open up the court to the forehand and then get to the backhand. Thirteen, Don't fear the forehand, huh? Yeah, well... He did a nice job as it is you look at the player profile of Federer 29 still as eager as ever to rack up major titles Simon tested him in the second round had a scrap through that one in five. Djokovic was able to break down Federer's forehand at the US Open in the semifinal. I mean obviously Federer was right there had match point. But late in that match, the forehand was spraying quite a bit from Federer in that one. Sure was. He lost the match eventually on a forehand error, one of 35 errors from that side alone in that long five-setter. play and Djokovic returning beautifully so far off Federer's first serve. This guy moves as well as anyone particularly on this kind of surface where he can stop and start use his flexibility his mobility. One. These guys know how many high quality shots at the right moment it's going to take to win this Boy, match. This is something else. I mean, good approach, kept it low, and Federer just routinely hits the pass. And that was a good return game from Novak. Roger missed just one first serve in that game. But Djokovic was in every point. A lot of statements trying to be made here early. Mm. When 
And they played 19 times previously. Both men know there are no secrets out there. There might be some strategic tweaks, but it's more about being your best in the big moments. play off the return. That was a good second serve. Kicked it up high. 15 all. And Federer has had enough of standing back and just trying to chip that ball. He's made tinkered with this shot, mostly to deal with Nadal and to deal with the heavy spin. But, you know, other guys like Djokovic and obviously Murray, they try to employ that as well. Points one always a key stat, especially when the heavyweights collide. That was an area that Djokovic dominated in that U.S. Open semifinal. Did a great job, Patrick, defending his second serve because Roger didn't really attack it. That's right. They get rallies, and Djokovic would more than hold his own. Mm -hmm. Another wrinkle for Federer is he's, he's taken a couple of returns already inside the baseline. Mm -hmm. That's something that he never did before. T15. That's an improvement there on the serve, and allowing Djokovic to win a few cheap points here and there. If he can do that, will Federer perhaps back up? He was crowding the box in that first serve return. Yeah. Serving from Djokovic in that game, he still hasn't lost a point when he's gotten the first serve in. On serve, opening set. Beautiful evening here, warm. The roof at Rod Laver Arena wide open as the 15,000 settle in. First of these primetime in Australia semis. They play them on consecutive nights here. So 24 hours from now, we'll have live coverage of Andy Murray and David Ferrer. Fifteen love. No problem with the Federer serving rhythm in the early going. No. Thirty long. I think you'll see Federer. Try to direct a lot of his serves at the Djokovic forehand, which is a bigger shot. But certainly on the return, it's not quite as consistent. That's the first ace of the match. Full T15. You don't see Federer served often into the body, which he just did there. And I wonder if we'll see a little bit more of that tonight. Something that Paul Anacone worked with when he worked with Pete Sampras, tried to get Pete to do a little bit more of serve, a little more into the body. Good deep return from Djokovic to take command of the point. 
full that's, team. That's, that's my favorite return, that hard one down the middle. That seems to give players so much trouble getting out of the way of that first shot when it's hard down the middle. We'll see if he goes back to the, the forehand side of Djokovic on this serve. Nope. Game Ace on. out wide. To all. From the sun of Australia to the snow of Aspen, Colorado, Winter X 15 starts Thursday on ESPN 2 at high noon Eastern time. Slope style men's elimination, snowmobile freestyle elimination at 9 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN. Sean White defends his title on the snowboard half pipe. Winter X on ESPN and ESPN 2 Thursday, also available in 3D online and on your phone. Play from Djokovic. Yeah, and it helps when you have a little more confidence in your serve, doesn't it? 15 long. That serve wide, and he's so good off both wings and taking the ball early. He's right on top of the baseline. That real velocity in that serve, just excellent placement. Pulling Federer off the court. Oh, what a feeling for him, Patrick, to have this element of his game together. To be at number three in the world all year with more doubles than aces is shocking. Now amazing. it's back, though, the serving. Uh, it's, it, was, it was amazing that he could keep it together. Times when he was double faulting once, twice a game in some matches. It was almost like a male version of Dementieva. Yeah. High level of play. Except for the serving and just trying to manage that that frailty. For sure, he had to be the only player in the top 50 to average more double yeah. faults than aces. You see the dominance down under, dropping serve just four times. It was a shaky start. Couldn't find the first serve of the opening game. Had a fight up break point off, but now he's got it rolling. That's the Australian Open's front yard. The backyard on the sunny side, a little rowdier. That's where the honey can really starts to flow. Major social scene, party scene. Two different places to watch the match if you don't happen to have one of the precious tickets inside. No backyard brawl. No, it's been quiet, thankfully. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and was the fans of Djokovic, some of the ethnic Serbs here clashing with the Croats in past years, but there's been, I would say, a very well-behaved Australian Open this year. Mm. Love 13. Mm, that was going be a little indecision there on that backhand from Federer. Just like that, it's Love 30. Those tiny little decisions, the shot selection. Yeah. The side sets. Let's the Just missed it. Djokovic is challenging. Look to his camp. He right yeah. used a challenge here. Yeah, I wouldn't think Federer would take such a relaxed, sort of casual swat at that ball if it was actually in. <laughs> I love 30. Djokovic really seeing Federer serve yeah. well tonight. You yeah. see family is on Ivanovic there from a serve. 
Marian Vita just in the lower right of your screen and just above him in the pinkish shirt is Novak's father. They're done. Vita, the former pro, worked with Jumbo for a long time. Wasn't there to see the win over Federer at the U.S. Open or his man playing the final. He was back home tending to the health of his wife. Talk about those little decisions you have to make sometimes, Chris, about when to come in, when to play offense. Well, look at this one right here. That's, an, that's a bad decision right there from Djokovic. He wanted to be more aggressive. He wasn't. You saw him sort of mimicking the swing after that, and Roger made him pay quickly. You've got to pick your shot and be decisive. That's the kind of serve that's going to win you a free point against almost anybody in the world. And Djokovic on the stretch gets it in play well. He wasn't listed as the best return guy in the world by Roger when Federer was asked the question. Nor was Murray. David Ferrer, he said, has yeah. the best return in the men's yeah. game. Surprising answer. I put Djokovic up there now. Considering that Roger owns Ferrer, it was kind of a curious reply. <laughs> No lay is Novak's nickname. Well, not even Djokovic's speed allows him to get to that dropper with enough time to make an effective reply. Advantage Federer. Well, Federer also has to make good decisions, too, because once he gets Djokovic on the run, he's got to keep him there. That's hard to do. And I think if there is one place where Djokovic has the edge is that he's probably a little bit more consistent off the ground. He's not going to make as many errors, but Federer, of course, has better offense. Again, Federer. So both men have faced pressure situations in service games. Federer... Climbs out of a love 30 hole and holds, and now he'll change rackets with one game to go before the ball change. Kind of interesting there. A couple of times, you know, on that one backhand Djokovic hit, he took a practice cut like over to his box, and then a forehand as to say, you know, when you have the opportunity, don't hit a check swing. Yep, and he could have also, Brad, come to the net behind that short ball. It's the first time, too, on, after that point, he started stretching his shoulders yep. a little bit, and he's breathing a little bit harder at the moment. We saw that against Burdich in the quarterfinals, kind of messed with the shoulder. He was, he was shaking his head side to side in a kind of a funny way. Later, he had problems with the contact lenses and had to have some solutions brought to the court. So there could be these little things in the match that it seemed to be bothering him. Mm -hmm. He's got Brad tape on, on that shoulder underneath the shirt, right? He does. He has that, what, that kinesio tape. Mm -hmm. return on and then a that's amazing a beautiful that he volley. Can hit this volley because he's coming forward quickly Chris look at that he's moving and as he's moving he comes under the ball and makes it stop and you think his racket's gonna be late but it comes knifing through Oof. with great speed Winning quite a few cheap points on that first serve, and that's a he's great sign. 13 for 13 when he's gotten the first serve in.
those kind of probing points where the different periods within the point each guy's on the offensive the other guy has to defend That was where Djokovic had to buy time. Yeah, that was the one where Roger was trying to take it early, but it was good depth from Novak. And Djokovic. All starting with very strong serving from Djokovic in this opening set. The start so important for Djokovic, he said, and to make the statement. Let Federer know that you're here to play your best. Well, he's definitely done that, Chris. Been outstanding, hitting the ball so well, serving beautifully. Thank you. Plays are ready. Quiet, please. Djokovic hit a good aggressive forehand off the slice. But look at the movement from Federer. Look at the control with the forehand. Djokovic expecting the cross court. Is that trouble with that forehand return? The kicker that gets up to the forehand has been difficult for Djokovic to hit with any kind of authority. Federer is mixing up his serve well. And that was the first real sign of frustration because he knows it's coming to his forehand. strong Hold answer on. Patrick to Djokovic's own surface game. Yeah it sure is. I'll tell you and Federer is moving beautifully as well. He's talked about over the last couple of years that there have been times when his backs bothered him. He heard that at Wimbledon last year when he lost to Burditch. Hold to 15. Federer, excuse me, Chris Federer says that he's, you know, 100 percent healthy and his movement, which has never been been bad, but uh, he looks to be really covering the court very efficiently. Game Federer. That's what's exciting about this matchup tonight, guys, is that Djokovic also is healthy. He's confident. His mindset is there. So it should be both men at their best with no excuses. Every time Roger shows up at a Grand Slam there's some kind of record or milestone or streak 27 of course they had 23 in a row which is by far the most and this is the major that he's continued his record streak of Grand Slam quarterfinals yeah. so get that streak going uh, you know the more you see him the more amazed you become not just at his play and his his genius but his longevity as well exactly durability yep. I mean, with Rafa having his problems, it shows you why it's been since 1969 that one man has held all four major titles at one time and back to back Australian Opens where Nadal's body has betrayed him, having to retire against Murray a year ago down here. 45 straight majors that Federer has played. And played through, as you said, some issues. Exactly. Mono three years ago when he lost to Djokovic here in the semis. Djokovic, for his point, too, he's also avoided injuries that have cost him 
participation in the majors. This is his 26th major in a row. Of course, he's had issues of frailty within them. He's had yeah. to retire from three different Grand Slam matches. Djokovic on a shot when you're looking to approach. He just didn't go after that backhand. He just kind of pushed it into the middle of the court, and Federer was there in plenty of time. It's another one where Novak just kind of took a check swing, and then he took that practice cut and told himself to hit it. from Federer again. Be careful serving the second ball to the forehand. Yep, and that was a pretty that's good serve, ball. but Federer again looking to step in, and that's allowing him to take the offensive on the return. Hitting it cleanly. That is a, just an unbelievable one-two punch right there with the forehand. was there but Djokovic just put a little extra on this and this this is the kind of shot Chris where if you don't really go for it and hit it big enough or get it deep enough you'll get burned so he he did enough with that shot it was over the low part of the net when he when he made contact he had to hit it below the net so he couldn't hit it flat Better starting to make some inroads on the Djokovic second serve, though. Starting to pick up on it. Yeah, so first little sign I see of a little pressure getting to Djokovic. And I don't mean pressure of the moment, pressure of the Federer game. Starting to squeeze the serve a little bit here. I wouldn't be surprised to see Djokovic take a little bit off his first serve here. As he's just three for ten on second serve points. Got the short return. Full credit to him. He went for that serve. That was 125, which is about as big as he will hit it. that Federer is pushing himself a little bit more, Chris, to get behind that ball and hit a backhand. In times past, we've seen Roger get stretched and he relies on the slice too much. I think Djokovic was surprised with the depth of that yeah. shot and the heaviness of mm -hmm. it. I think you're exactly right. Another thing we're seeing from Roger is not, he's not pressing on the runaround forehand. You know, he's trusting his backhand a lot more. Oh. 
use. And you're seeing the tension of the crucial part of this set showing up in a few misses. I just feel, Chris, that Djokovic feels that he's got to continue to hit big and go for his shots. And I just feel that that's starting to wear on him a little bit in this game. He'll say that alternately, Patrick, he's got to be patient, but the other times mm. be bold. It's like he's not quite sure. Roger's shaking his head. I think that was the first time he was a little bit indecisive in a rally. We haven't seen many of those points, have we, where the, uh, and it was out, where the guy's hitting down the middle of the court, yeah. waiting for the other guy to kind of take a chance. I think both, both, both guys know how important this opening set is because they both played well and they both implemented sort of what they want to do. This is fun, a really tense, crucial part of the set coming up now. Beautiful evening here in Melbourne, and a high-quality first set. Djokovic unable to get a break point against Federer's serve. He's had leads like Love 30 once. Federer unable to convert on the one break point he's had against Novak's serve. Patrick, do you think this first set for Novak Djokovic is more important for him physically because he kind of mm. goes up and down? I, you know, I don't actually, Brad, because I think they're, they're both just playing so well. Uh, I think obviously mentally it's going to be big. Well, Djokovic That's has come from behind before against Federer. I think what's interesting is that, that big semifinal in New York, Djokovic admits it, he got tight. At the yeah. end of the first set and the end of the third set, and he lost both of them. Yeah, he was the coming, that he won. He won easily. He was coming from behind the, yeah. the whole match. But he says that by the fifth that. set, he learned from the mistakes he'd made, and he was anything but timid in the end of that set. I mean, I, I think to to Brad's question, I mean, I think uh, there there are more questions about Djokovic in general, right. just physically and. But uh, to me, he's he's had a great run to the semis. There's no reason he should be fatigued at all. I think he's psychologically, it's a big Maybe, issue. Maybe, yeah. Oh, oh, that's beautiful right there. Right off the bounce, and that's that's a nice-looking service hold for Federer at love. Five gets over. After pressuring the Djokovic serve in the previous game. Oh, yeah, now there's right back yep. pressure on Djokovic. Had to get out of that tough game. Federer holds in about a minute. See, I think this 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 Anacone effect that we've talked about with Federer stepping in and being more aggressive, I just think it's it's opening up his offense a lot more, enabling him to use his ability, use his talent to hit shots that he just hit right there. Fifteen long. I see a little breeze, Brad, on the Djokovic shirt. Is there a little bit of wind down there? I'm going to say wind gusting up to nine miles an hour. Okay. And they look at Ana Ivanovic, fellow countrywoman of Djokovic. Of course, they grew up together. Playing in that now famous swimming pool in Belgrade, right. where facilities That's in Serbia are pretty primitive, but the young players were very hungry and talented. 
Well, they've come a long way, I'll tell you. Winning the Davis Cup this past year. Djokovic playing a huge role in that 7-0 in 2010. Davis Cup singles matches. You've been right on with that, Patrick, because Djokovic has said that himself. Winning the Davis Cup. What a way to end 2010. He had to win a huge fourth rubber when they were down 2-1 to right. France. And, and to win it on home soil, he felt like it was a once-in-a-lifetime. And he's taken a lot away from that. Mm -hmm. That is a lot to do, he says, with his success in this tournament. Even at 40 love, both guys are playing hard on every point. Good service game there. Good answer from Djokovic. Ken Federer service to a tiebreak next. Crowd fully engaged, and we hope you are too. Watching back in the States, either up real late or up real early. I think you'd agree it's worth it when these two oh, guys yeah. are on the court on a big stage. All right. High quality opening set. We'll see if it'll be decided in a tiebreak if Federer can hold. Done a lot of that, Patrick, in this yeah. first set, hitting behind Djokovic. Well, Djokovic is so fast and he gets out of the out of the corner so well that if you can hit a good shot and get him to have to change direction. You've you've hit a, a couple of really good shots because he's not only does he have great speed, but Djokovic has tremendous balance. Better has come forward a lot in this Australian Open, a lot more than the other guys That's who've it. reached the quarterfinals, and he's had a pretty good success rate converting. And the breeze has picked up. This is one of the first times I've seen it breezy inside of here on the outside courts, but it seems more breezy in here. Oh, what a shot. Again, the aggressive stance and aggressive mentality off the backhand wing paying off for Federer. And sending a pretty strong message as we had apparently toward a tie break. Oh. Novak said, wait a second. I didn't realize he could uh, <laughs> use my pace that well off the backhand wing. Enjoying that game. And it's appropriate. A very tight first set decided in a tiebreak. I'd be surprised if these guys have played the last 20 sets head to head without going to a tiebreak. You have to go back to 2009 U.S. Open semis when Federer took the first set in a tiebreak and then went on to win in straights. That was the last one. the first tiebreak that Rogers played at this event. Djokovic one and one. He was very solid against Burdich in that tiebreak. That was a huge part of the match. He had taken the first set decisively, a very tight second set. He kind of let, he felt Burdich back into the match. And Djokovic was able to take command, won the tiebreak, and pretty much ruined Burdich's chances. Yeah, ran away with the third. One on. 
who can make first serves in the breaker. Mm. Both guys have been so dominant when they've gotten the first serve in. Djokovic did the ball clipped the top of the net sat up and he just crushed this forehand right here and Federer on his heels hey crosses him some small things to side these sets of these thanks. matches I get, don't I they? get a break he said <laughs> open for him but he missed badly on that that's the one Patrick he doesn't like though when it was up at the shoulders he likes to go for that one down the line when it's a bit lower it was a tougher shot well, I didn't think it was up that high Brad it looked like he hit it right around hip level but maybe you have a better view from down there Too passive, those two points. Djokovic is not going to miss unless you press him. And to me, Roger looked a little passive there. There's a miss like that backhand up the line. Shake the confidence just a bit. Just, just, a, just enough. It doesn't take a lot how well both these guys have played in this set. Djokovic working extremely hard. He's got the 4 1 lead. crowd just hushed really enjoying this and the smart tennis fans they know the importance of this opening set both these guys have played well which ups the ante when you go to a tie well, does. Well, that's exactly right if you lose this set you walk over your set down and you're saying I played well so what do I have to do to change the complexion of it 54 minutes just high quality tennis in this first of the men's semis. play from Novak going heavy to Rogers forehand taking him wide and he's not fearing that forehand on some of these big points he said PG that a couple of points here and there always decide these matches and he has been up to the challenge so far chance to close out the tie break on his racket Been the bolder player in the tie break. Yeah, 
And the first serve from Djokovic serving him so well in this opening set. Set point. Djokovic, you got to be okay with that miss. You were looking to be aggressive. You had the opening. Still got three more set points if he needs them. But the next two would be on Federer's surf. so far. I cannot compare my success to his. And I got my hands full with uh, Djokovic. I have to um, be confident on the court, have the right attitude, and then th that's the only way I can beat Roger. 20 seconds to us. Uh, He's a quality player who plays really offensive. He takes it to the opponent. Go back two seconds on red. You have to try to get him on the run as, as much as you can and, and, and try to let him know that you know you're you're there to win. One and you're back. So far, Novak Djokovic letting him know he's here to win. Taking the first set in a tie break from Roger Federer. Darren, coming into the match, Djokovic said our matches often go a point here or a point there, and we went looking for the points Federer might like to have back. Brought us back to four all, 30 all. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. In such a high quality match, we're really searching for something, and it's very small at four all, 30 all. Roger Federer had about four forehands that normally he's a little more aggressive on. Chipping the backhand, which is working well, but that one there, he probably could have gone after it more. Same again. That's a short ball. Works the forehand again, the same again to the middle of the court. All of those were attackable, and finally overplays the forehand wide. That's a huge point, but a very high quality first set. If you're a Roger Federer fan, the last time that he's won a lot of matches when he's lost the first set in a tiebreaker. The last time he lost a match after losing the first set in the breaker was way back to the French Open in 2003 where he lost to Lewis Horner. All right, let's get it back to Chris and Patrick, set number two. Chris, Darren, thank you. It was a long time ago the loss to Horner, Roland Garros. Gains confidence from that opening set. Wasn't the case though at the U.S. Open, the most recent meeting in a major that defied that trend. Well, I think Federer's at his best now, Chris, when he can play more offense. And against Vavrinka, who didn't play well in that quarterfinal, look at Roger. Almost half the time he was hitting shots from inside the baseline. Tonight, so far, just 22% of the time. And he's looking to be offensive. That's a credit to Djokovic and how well he's hitting the ball. But I think at the key moment, with that one point that Darren replayed there at four all 30 all was one of them. And I think in the tie break when it was two all that two one spot, there's three, four points. Federer to me was a little bit indecisive and a little bit too defensive. And in the tie break, there was that back end up the line that he yep. pushed long and that gave Djokovic the lead. And he played with a lot of confidence after getting up the mini break. Interesting numbers. 
in the first set, Patrick. Each man had the same number of winners as errors. More for Federer mm -hmm. with a more aggressive game. What jumps out is you, know, you look at second serve points one being so crucial. Djokovic really struggled in that department. Federer much more command of his second serves. Yeah. It didn't hurt Djokovic yeah. as much. You're right. It, it will be something we need to track, though, because he served at such a high percentage of first serves. He was at 75%, which is outstanding for him. But I think, look, I think if you're Federer and you're in the Federer camp, you say, look, the game plan that we came out with really was working as far as being offensive, being aggressive. You got to trust it and stay with it at crunch time. And that's, I think, what was missing at the crucial stages of that first set. I think Federer in kind of thought at that four all 30 all that Djokovic was a little bit tight and might just miss and might give it to him. I don't see that happening tonight the way that Djokovic is playing unless he tires physically which is possible based on how you know how hard these guys are working. It's possible that could happen. It was a 58-minute first yeah. set. Djokovic, but those are hard, forcing, aggressive swings that he's taking every time the ball is there to be hit. You know, Patrick, you know, you talked about, you know, Federer not being too upset after losing that first set. He looks so relaxed, and now this is the time where you're going to see where's the Rubik's Cube going? Where's the mid match adjustment going to come from Roger? What should it be, Brad, in your opinion? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he started venturing forward a little more if he had a, a shot. Oh, oh Djokovic got it! Oh, boy, he's answering the questions that are being posed to him so far tonight by Federer. That is a phenomenal, not only the get, but what he did with it. This is sliding on hard court like it's a clay court. That was an incredible slide. An incredible touch once he got there. Given Djokovic some trouble on the backhand side. He's been swinging very freely from the baseline, Patrick, when he's come forward sometimes. Now that's a low ball. That's a yeah. tough shot to handle and tremendous defense there from Federer. Another kind of check swing. Yeah. Now I love I love the way though he's he's going after that that was a ball he had to play a little more off uh, defensively. Anything up high, Chris, that's a, a, from even above the knees up, he's just, he's going after it. Better went after that return. Djokovic has the reply. It's a strong opening service game of the second set for the serve. It looks to me like when they're having these neutral rallies that Djokovic has Federer much more on his back heels and Djokovic looks under control with his aggression. Djokovic knows that there is no window when you can just let down against Federer at any point in these matches then undo all the good work you've done for the first hour to build a lead. Wow. Just ripping 
forehands. We oftentimes Djokovic in the past has struggled somewhat with the consistency on the forehand. That is the side that can break down. But I'll tell you, tonight, he's actually hitting his forehand bigger than Federer's. It also looks like when they're going forehand to forehand, it looks like Djokovic is more confident, you know, in that matchup than Roger. If that's the case, Brad, that's not a good sign for Federer. The points that are relatively quick here are very physical. A lot of explosive moving. Fitness may end up being a huge part of this match. The good news for the winner is that they've got two days off before the final. Just some monster hitting off both wings. Seeing the confidence flowing from him since he's won that tiebreak. He loses the first set. Djokovic actually has a, a losing record in Grand mm -hmm. Slams, 13 and 19. It's been a very strong front runner, as Federer has. That's an important point early in this set as Djokovic now has a chance to take an early break. This is the first break point he's had against Federer's serve all night. Roger looks rattled from this, this barrage, as you call it. Good description. Yeah. throwing some big shots at Federer who is broken and after the game as he walked to his chair in exchange with the chair umpire Enric Molina can't be sure what it's about but Brad you think it was in reference to the Djokovic box yeah it was definitely in reference to that I don't know if it was for coaching or for those fans but Roger was clearly annoyed and he definitely told the umpire something which immediately the umpire got on the walkie-talkie mm. Okay. Now the up 
fire on the walkie-talkie can can mean lots of things. It could mean yeah. a trainer call, which we don't think that was certainly. It could mean that he's asking for the referee to get involved somehow. Mm -hmm. His box, I, I barely. I mean, a few, you know, Bopas and come on, but I, they've been pretty quiet. I mean, it's more Novak looking over to his box. <laughs> That's basically what Bopa means in surf language. Well, Federer's had issues with the Djokovic camp before in other tournaments in years past. And he's not the only one, by the way. But they could be pretty forceful yes, in that box exactly. up and uh, cheering. This is a. A couple of loose points from Djokovic in this game. Two errors right after getting the break. First time Roger on that last mm -hmm. point dropped way exactly. back on the second serve return. We talked about yep. a mid-match adjustment. There was the first sign of changing up. He put a little air under some of those balls and gave Djokovic a little less pace to work with. Federer may have to go into more of a defensive kind of posture, meaning further behind the baseline, because Djokovic is just beating him to the punch. Please. a couple and then he moved back and he just rolled the ball deep cross court and he's produced a couple break points deep breaths from Djokovic so it's a departure from the game plan which is a lot of aggression that well, didn't work well it's you never know what's part of the yeah. game plan that's why this guy is who he is but yes I think he's as, as Brad said mid-match adjustment Good. Molina overruling another first serve for Djokovic. Federer's first break point since early in the opening set. Like it was Djokovic's first service game. That's the biggest serve of the Joker all night. It was Brad 129 miles per hour. Still break point. Please. Yep. Paper is just stuck in the net there. Just. You see? Well, well, it's, feather, it. it's, it's under the key aside. <laughs> it's a feather. There are birds that fly around overhead. What a time for that. Put Great it in point. his cap. Let's go back to the game where Djokovic broke serve. 
And look what he did, pestering that backhand wing. Going heavy, Federer trying to deal with it, trying to move forward, trying to be aggressive, but it's pretty hard off those heavy balls to the backhand wing. And finally, he's able to force the error. Keeps going at the backhand. The high, heavy one induces the error. So what does Federer do in the very next game? He starts to play a little junk ball right here. He steps back, uses the slice, tries to rely on his defense a little bit more. That ball is a departure from what he's done. That caused the error. And then again, on the last point of that game, he played a similar style. So very interesting. And a net approach and a backhand volley winner to open this game. We've seen Federer many times in his career. You know, use defense, Chris, to get kind of turn the tide of the match. Remember we played Baghdadis here. Of course, Baghdadis had that great run. He was down to set in a break. He went into a defensive mode. He's done it in big matches. And then at the, by the end of the match or midway through, he gets on top. He starts to play more offense. But oftentimes he uses that to kind of change the complexion of what's going on out there. Isn't that a rare ability, Patrick? He's maybe the most instinctively aggressive player yeah. there is out there to go out of your comfort zone, to go against your tendencies when you're well, in a little bit of trouble. Well, I think it is in his comfort zone, though. He's okay with that. That's part of his greatness is that he can do that. Well, just mentioned to his box about something about his foot, and he's breathing very hard at the moment. Djokovic? Yeah, he just mentions uh, something about the foot. So a turnaround in his second set. Federer holds it low and he leads 3 2. A little shirt change for Roger. Yeah. And a real change in momentum in this second set. He'd been broken time. once in 30 service games in the two previous rounds. Broken for the first time tonight and able to immediately turn the tables. Yeah, and it's, it appeared, uh, Brad, you're down there courtside, that Djokovic was uh, a little rattled there when he went to the changeover. What happened? Yeah, I mean, he was looking up at his box, and then when he got broken, he, somebody must have yelled something. He definitely yelled something at the fan. But to me, it looks a little bit like in a physical encounter. Djokovic goes up and down with his fitness. Sometimes, you know, he's there. Sometimes he's breathing hard. And Roger is Mr. Flatline. I mean, we could go five hours, and it just seems like his physicality stays the same. And that's intimidating. Challenge. And he played the ball, knew it was going to be long before he asked for the challenge. It's a great play if you can get away with yeah, it, it now. didn't stop immediately, but again, players have been allowed to, and that was in anyway. This is a real opportunity here for Federer to get right back in it. Obviously, he's in it, but to get up a break now, it would be a big momentum shift. Versatility and flexibility with this play right here. I'm sure that brings a smile to Coach Anacone's face. And beginning with the point where she got the break, Better has reeled off seven in a row now. First time he's really connected with this one up the line, and that is 
An intimidating sign for Djokovic, who's in real trouble now. Defending by Federer back to back breaks. Had the Djokovic serve. Three games in a row and a 4 2 lead. Federer wasn't so much magic in this swing of momentum in this second set, but smarts and guile and speed. Better digging deep here early in this second set. Using all of his experience. Oh. 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 Great thing, haven't you? Watch one of the greats ever, perhaps the best. Pushed, tested, have to yep. search for answers. You know, it's amazing, isn't it? 16 major titles already been talked about as quite possibly the greatest player to ever pick up a racket. And he's out here trying to figure it out still. But a couple of loose points gives Djokovic an opening. What's amazing to me is watching it is Federer is six years older. He's done way more running in this match, but yet he looks way less tired. He's barely breathing. And Novak's the one looks like, you know, physically he's a little more, much more tired. Guys, very short off seasons. Djokovic, because he was so involved in those emotional matches in the Davis Cup for Serbia in December, so he took about a week, but it was never a matter of relaxing, recharging, then building your fitness back up. It's almost like there was no off season. Big game right here. If Federer can get out yep. of this game, you can. Kind of relax for a minute or so. The intensity has been so high these last few games. And Federer covering a lot of court.
Djokovic has really handled the offensive that play of Federer so well. I think that's why the defensive styles worked a little bit better because Federer went after it forehand and he sort of gave Djokovic the opening with the forehand cross court and he crushes that backhand cross. Great chance to perhaps reclaim momentum in this set. That, by the way, Chris, that backhand, look at this frustration from Djokovic, was the first winner of the second set for Djokovic. And that's look at the different look that Federer's given him. And look at this sign of frustration. When in doubt, Federer hard with the first serve at the forehand. He did not handle it well. Time Physical Roger, stuff, Brad. Yeah, that's that time when Roger ran around that backhand, gave up a lot of court, and didn't do that much, and that's what left the opening. That's gotten him into trouble a couple of times in this game. That's Djokovic's counter-punching ability. But these guys are working extremely hard right now physically. He flipped that up over the backhand side, forcing Djokovic to make a decision. Did he try to hit a smash or Boy. flick it? Well, he couldn't get to it. He just got it up just high enough to get it out of his reach. Smart thing to throw the racket down when you're going to hit the deck. This is the chance of hurting yourself. What a shot. Great point. That's it. Again, that forehand return, tough to control. Brad and Djokovic may look tired, but I've seen that look before from both guys. And sometimes, though, what they're showing out there it's doesn't tell the whole story. <laughs> I, I promise you, if this becomes a fitness test, I'm going Mr. Federer. Yeah, I agree with he, that. Because his flatline ability is just off the charts. Well, also his nerves. His, he keeps so calm. Djokovic spinning out. He tried to come forward for the dropper. And a couple of knockdowns in this game. The ready though, Brackett's left his hand twice. You know, he's being probed in all sorts of ways. He's looking for Federer to be offensive with the backhand. That's why it was great to play the dropper, Patrick. He was hopping backwards off balance. Plus 
frustration building. Testing game for Federer. Saves two break points and stretches his lead. Lena and Kim Kleister surviving the women's semis. This is the first of two men's semis. And with the set, perhaps slipping away from Djokovic. He was doing a lot of slipping in that game, Patrick. Yeah. So a new set of shoes. He'll come out and serve at 2-5. Get the feeling that that was his chance to get back on serve. It's a tall mountain to climb in this set now. You know, I think for Djokovic, too, as you, you look at the way this match is being played and the physicality that we've talked about, that uh, I think he's ill-advised right now to be expending so much of this emotional energy looking up at his box. I think he needs to be calmer in between points. And uh, he's, he's, a, he's allowing the situation and the pressure uh, to, to aggravate him, I think, a little bit too much. It's funny he pointed to that foot about four games ago and now he just you know he got the shoe change He's wasting energy on his changeovers Federer meanwhile just has his legs crossed his foot up as relaxed as can be please now look for Federer to make a push here to quite try to get a break and serve, start serving in the third set. I think he senses that he could maybe make a little push here. He might be able to not only take this set, but open up a quick lead in the third. Just one winner for Djokovic after 10 in the opening set. It's not like Djokovic has played badly in this no, set. No, not at all. Federer has just, you know, changed things up, changed the pace on some of his ground strokes. He's looked to run around and hit that forehand. He's played some, the drop shot more often than we're used to seeing on a hard court, certainly. I think Novak just dropped his intensity and in that one little kind of a you know hiccup game at 2-1 yep. and then he dropped a little bit physically and then that's the difference in this match. Let's for service. By the way, they're obviously watching this back in Serbia because Janko Tipsarovic just tweeted that this tennis level is just insane. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> yep. He, well, he, gave, he gave Federer a big right. fight on this court. Nine, years seven ago. in the fifth. Yep. yep. <laughs> Tipsarovic, the Davis Cup teammate of Djokovic. You follow his, his tweets? Well, One got, of many that you got follow? Got sent to me. Oh, okay. Me. That's a retweet yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I just wondered, you know, how many no, I players... If you go I as deep start. as Yanko to, well, he, to follow... He apparently was tweeting while they were celebrating after they won the Davis Cup, and they started to get a little bit garbled after a few hours into the party. Drinking and tweeting. And dangerous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Novak yeah. breaks the string Federer of four straight games for Federer. The four-time Aussie Open champion will serve to level this match at one set all. Not a seat to be had here tonight. Novak has his small vocal section, but this is a pro Federer crowd, as it always is in Australia. which caught the line Love hanging in the point.
couldn't handle the ball hit Adam and it's Djokovic digging into this game now. That was a great shot. That was a passing shot with no spin just hit below the net. A working shot pass. That's a great play. Djokovic going back behind Federer. Who's been ripping the forehand cross court that time. He's kind of blocked it, redirected it back up the line. Taste of his own medicine. Boy, Roger was not expecting that, was he? Two break points for Djokovic to get back on serve. The two points that better has won in this game have been on first serves. And once again to that Djokovic forehead. An impressive fight back. And yeah, we're back on serve. Well, I mentioned during that second set, Federer started to use the drop shot a lot more, but this time it went against him. Watch Djokovic defending. Good time normally to play a drop shot. You're sort of getting back into position. But see right there, Djokovic read it. That was before Roger even hit the ball, and that allowed him to get up to that ball, take it right around the knees, and had plenty of time. And he's right back in this set. Brad, Federer has been so composed. What did you see in his face after he was broken and serving for the set? I think he just was a little bit annoyed Thank with himself you. that, you know, especially that 5 2 game Why, that, please. you know, he didn't make a little more progression and a couple of loose errors. But he seems relaxed. I mean, he didn't, you know, he doesn't look up at his box. He doesn't show anything. <laughs> 15 long. Very first ace of the match for Djokovic. Yeah, coming into the match, he was averaging about eight per match. It didn't have to be that superb. His better was was not going to run that down. Yeah, but that's a risky shot. I mean, he's got a pretty easy situation just to rip that back in. You say put away the dropper, Brad? I'm not a big fan of it, especially when you have his two-handed back in. Combination for Djokovic in this match. That wide serve in the deuce court. And because he can take the ball off either wing, 
effectively into the opening court. It's really opening up the options for Djokovic. He's hitting that spot in the wide serve. Exactly. Only one ace, but he's won lots of points by setting it up with the well-placed serve. noise in the rafters. There's a feather that floated right over Djokovic's right. head as he was serving That was incredible. And it landed on the court. The ball kid's going to go pick it up, but I, I thought maybe he'd be distracted by that. It came fluttering down right into his service motion. Yeah, you see it? Yeah, nice pickup <laughs> by our <laughs> camera team and our tape guys. Great job. The birds are a, they're a, a factor, factor here. here. Yeah. Noisy, and now they're and their feathers all over the place. Better suddenly two points from the set. Those darn Indian minus. Is that the species? Yeah, that's one of them. defending and running and scrambling to have to hit that perfectly timed backhand over the ball like that. That's a tough one for a one-hander. That look that's up at his shoulders. Yep. To do it when you're so taxed already within the point. Point for five all. to slide on hard courts is just outrageous. That's so dangerous to do. You can roll an ankle. <laughs> this is a test of Rogers composure now, isn't it? He thought he had this set. Looking to be offensive from the baseline. He's looking to hit the ball flatter. He got back into this set by playing a little more junk, by slicing the ball, by rolling it up high. He's back playing into Djokovic's hands right now with his play from the baseline. Djokovic just eating up the pace. physically feeling some effects. I think he's he got a little bit winded there. I think he thought what you thought, Chris, that the set was over. And I thought so too at 5-2. And he let down a little bit and Djokovic has an opportunity Thank you. to get himself a commanding lead in this match. Yeah, that 
those flat hard balls are just Djokovic is in a groove now. Novak has found another gear, you know, looks like physically, and he's hitting the ball as hard right now as he has all match. What an interesting set. Federer down a break early, then up a break in command, serving for it, and now in danger of being broken at love. Couple points here and there. Both men know it. Could be a couple of these points right now. That was unbelievable. He was there, and it looked like that was just a whiff. Didn't bounce up like you thought it was going to. Is that one of those early dead spots in the court? Still break point. Djokovic serves for a two-set lead when you come back. And sometimes you watch a set and you see uh, five breaks of serve, and that means it's not a very high-quality set. <laughs> not in this case. You can watch a lot of matches, back without seeing a more interesting back-and-forth hustle within a set. Yeah, and I think that uh, the fatigue got to Federer a little bit. In this set, his second serve became a real liability. And I really think he made a tactical mistake there after he got the lead, Chris, by, by sort of trying to go back to playing more offense and back to flattening out his ground strokes. And he allowed Djokovic to sort of refine his rhythm and refine his groove. If he wants to avoid falling in the two set hole, better we'll have to find something special here. And Chris, the Djokovic crowd and supporters are on a roll. They're <laughs> making themselves heard. I don't doubt and they're vocal. making a lot of noise. I know they are. I mean, there are more people in here that are pulling for Federer, but it's Novak's crowd right now. And they're much louder. Making noise. Stop right the these of both fans, whoever they're rooting for, cannot yell out in the middle of the rally, which is what just happened. Both guys a good job focusing through that. Federer looked like he was taking a long look over at the Djokovic box right there. I'm sure it didn't come from there to the middle of the point. chances to grab a set that he looked down and out of about 15 20 minutes ago oh, beautiful. 
Two hours of superb, tough tennis. And a two-set lead for the underdog in this semifinal. And welcome back. It's Novak Djokovic with now a two-set lead on the defending champion, Roger Federer. Here, semifinal, Australian Open 2011. And in fact, it was exactly two years ago at this very tournament that Roger Federer trailed anyone two sets to love on a hard court. That was to Thomas Burdich in the round of 16. Came back to win that. Yeah, well, Roger Federer has actually just left the court, mm -hmm. so we've got a little bit of time to talk about the speed of Novak Djokovic. It's incredible. It's actually seeing this drop shot from Roger Federer now very quickly. If we go inside the point to look at the way he moves to that drop shot, a lot of the times he slides in there, but now he's actually starting to read it a little bit from Roger Federer. Very quick recovery here from Novak Djokovic. In fact, one of these was to get the break back in the second set. But you can see it coming. He's already on the way forward. And not only does he have the ability to get to the drop shot, but then you have to do something with it. Sliding into that drop shot there, and that's a great get from Djokovic. Again in the second set. Very much a repeat. He sees it coming. He's not backing up any further. And good strong court position there from Federer to play this shot. And he slides into it, gets the angle, and that thing slides away from Roger Federer. So once he gets locked into the points, especially when he got that break back in the second set, it looked like he was never going to miss. So this is going to be a very tough assignment for Federer to get back. Well, after Djokovic's last victory over Thomas Burdich, and he was so powerful, he said the one thing that's bringing his whole game together is improved fitness. No, that's for sure. We're seeing that tonight. And we did. Let's get back to Chris and Patrick for the third set. All right, Chris and Federer to serve. Quick trip off the court in between sets. Some private moments for Federer. Try to collect himself and gauge the challenge ahead, which is huge. Win three straight sets against this guy. What do you think he would tell himself well, in those moments? I'm not sure that uh, he's having a hard time breaking through the defenses. I think he's going to just stay the course. I mean, he's obviously been right there in both sets, Chris. And you right now it's a mental battle more than anything exactly. just to stay around early in this third. Brad, if you were coaching Brad, Federer, what would you tell him? Well, you know, his worst work is when he gave Novak the pace. He actually had his best four-game run when he went to little slices, put a little air on his shots, and went back. But he went back to that game that wasn't working. Do so you guys so agree need... that he should go back to what yeah, got him need... the break? Yeah, back up a little bit, use a little more guile. You know the Djokovic... He's not going to be thinking about guile. He's got the lead. He's going to be the adrenaline's flowing. He's going to just hit hit bigger and bigger as we see that Paul Anacone has stepped out at the end of the set. Hmm. Missed it. So Federer does what he must, which is hold serve at the beginning of this third set. There's a recap of set number two. What an unbelievable seesaw of momentum here. Djokovic getting the early break. Yeah, showing his tremendous speed that we've talked about. Then Roger starting to change things up. Gets to break point. Well, that's a break point for Djokovic, that early break. And then Roger has really continued to mix things up with that beautiful little lob after the drop shot. And this is where it looked like things were turning in Federer's favor. It got uh, a pretty big lead, but Djokovic comes back, gets the break back to get back on serve late in the set. Here's set point. Better has been in so many battles, been through everything you can be on a tennis court, but to be down a break, get it back, go up a break, and then be broken and lose the set, that is an absolute rarity. 15 long. Much less than the semifinal of a Grand Slam against a great player. Brad, most guys, it would be impossible to shake that kind of set off. Well, if anybody can do it, it's Roger. But to me, this match at the moment 
is there for the taking for Novak early in this third set, especially how that second set ended. And Roger gave a little come on if you heard in that opening game, guys, just to try to send the message to Djokovic that he, he believes he's still in it. So I think your point is right on, Brad. And I think Roger has enough experience to know that. He's come back from two sets down six times in his career, including last year at Wimbledon, and that was against Alejandro Fai in the opening round. But he's done it before. Did it here against Burdich? Yeah. But the Czech cooperated big time. And we don't know how Djokovic will respond in this this situation. He's not been up two sets to love on Roger. Since that Australian Open That's semi here when he won three years ago, and that that was a, a tough Tense fight, Djokovic taking out a, a Federer who was depleted and was suffering from that virus, and that third set went to a tiebreak. Djokovic just rolled in a 92 mile an hour Both first serve there and had to rely on his defense to get away with it. And this is outrageous balance <laughs> to hit a shot from that far behind the baseline hook at cross court. This is a good approach. Let me. For service. Well, Djokovic has done a really good job in the deuce court hitting that corner spot, bringing Federer wide as you see the serve direction of Djokovic. In the ad court, he's been a little spottier. He hasn't hit his spots as well. And the second serve landing short quite a bit, which is why he's winning just 38% of those points. But the first serve, he's doing a very good job, and his percentage is high, just under 70%. So overall, it's been a good serving night. for all the ball bounces. I think he said something to him. Yeah, I think he did too, Brad. I think you're absolutely right. And Novak, I thought I heard him say sorry. I'm almost sarcastically. Yeah, that was definitely sarcastic. Anything Federer could do now to get in his head at this point to set lead. Well, I think Federer's been annoyed at uh, not only the, the ball bouncing, particularly in the important moments, but I think the, the Djokovic box has also rattled him a little bit. He doesn't show a lot. Just off to his right right yeah. now. In a game in which Djokovic has thrown in a couple of doubles and really laid off in the pace of his first serve. Didn't go after that serve either. And Federer a chance to get an early break. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, that looked like it might have caught. Federer is challenging the corner. Left fast at line. What was called out? Quick challenge from Federer, wasting no time. Enrique Molina in the chair. Caught the line. We'll replay it. By the way, if, if Federer's comment about all the bouncing of the ball before the serve, that's had no effect. Kokovic is taking his time, nope. to say the least. Here comes Paul Anakin with some fresh towels. They couldn't get someone else to do that? Thank you. <laughs> I can't answer that one. Still break point. That was bad luck on that break point. Roger was well ahead. A very slow walk across the baseline for Federer. Those are the breaks. It's about as big as Djokovic has hit a first serve tonight. And yeah, just his second ace. Is that a wide one again paying off. Federer was even sitting on that one. Better. He really needs to get a break here, I think, to give himself a little emotional lift and also to maybe take a little bit out of the sails of Djokovic. Not so much for the score, but, you know, when you're down two sets to love, you, you want to give yourself a little breathing room, and I think Federer really needs it now. That's a bad miss there. Footwork, sluggish. So not that an early break would necessarily decide the set, but just to get himself going, yeah. maybe break the momentum. Mm -hmm. If you let Djokovic get away with serving a couple doubles and missing first serves, not a good sign. It's just kind of one of those matches where at the moment Federer's hitting winners, but he's not really putting them together. He's not getting them in clumps. And that's a big part of that is obviously what Djokovic is bringing to the table. It's forcing him to play and work for every point. He gives himself another break opportunity. Maybe he's trying to wake up the Fed fanatics. Get a little crowd. But I think it's more about what Patrick said. Just try to get himself going. Second break point of this game. Spent so much energy in the point. Well, that's a credit to Djokovic and what Brad talked about even early on in the match as you see this game over 10 minutes, which is going after the forehand and not being afraid to open the court up to that side. sets to a player this good playing this well I imagine your thoughts aren't about winning the match it's just kind of gaining traction and taking the little steps 
Yeah, you, got, you got to think about what's, what's in front of you. And again, I think psychologically more than anything, if you can get a quick break, it, you, you just you, you just got to think, okay, get a break, hold on. Clearly, you have to keep the, the, the smaller picture in mind. But I think Federer's, you know, done it so many times, Chris, that he he's I'm sure he still believes he can win the match. Well, I didn't mean that. I yeah. mean, you, you, right now you're thinking about the tiny steps you have to take. Yeah, to, I think to so. Begin the long yeah. road back. Absolutely. I'm not suggesting for a second he's lost belief, but the, the mountain must seem pretty steep right now. for uh, handling some of the high balls in that rally and again using that whipping forehand cross court that's just been a monster weapon for him Djokovic to fight off three break points just to get to one all. And that's a huge hold for Djokovic who's just not giving in at all. Federer hitting a couple of screaming winners during that game. Djokovic really Thank keeping you. his composure. Danger time for Federer now. Chris, you know, you were talking about Federer. You know, you, you can't win three sets, you know, in one. You know, you got to think short term. But also for Djokovic, I always feel like when you get up two sets, it's no time to relax. That's time when you want to get it. You, mm -hmm. you don't think about it. I have extra sets to play with. It is 6 a.m. Welcome early risers. We are live in Melbourne where it's 10 o'clock on Thursday night. Just a tremendous semifinal match so far. No breaks of serve in the opening set. Djokovic taking it in a tie break. A back and forth second set. Federer down an early break, then up a break. Broken while serving for it. Deflating loss of that second set. And already. Long, grinding games here early in the third. This for a spot in the Australian Open final. Against the winner of the Andy Murray, David Ferrer semifinal, which is 24 hours from now. Play call. Federer thinks about a challenge. Federer is really pressing now, Chris. That serve was into the body, was returned cleanly. And uh, even if they replay this point, Federer's already ready to play the next point. And that shot was clearly long, yeah. Patrick. Well, he was—he panicked on that first ball, Brad. He looked to come in. There was—he should not have come in there. That's <laughs> And Djokovic's combination of his 
his smothering aggressive play from the baseline, Chris, combined with his defense, is just wearing Federer down, I think, mentally and physically right now. Do you like Roger's chances of coming from a breakdown in this set if I he don't. loses this point? No, I don't. Two big serves and a come on from Federer. He knows he's in serious danger. And he's able to win two quick points with the first serve. Thank you. Just relentless on the return. Uh, he's, you know, not going for winners, Chris, on the return, but it's solid, it's deep, it's flat, and it's early every single time. It's at the backhand a lot. Well, that helps too. And I think he's fearful playing that chip backhand on that first ball, and then that's what's risky for him hitting over that one that's high to his backhand. Break point again. Trouble. chances here in Melbourne a very important match of the tennis landscape inside Rod Laver Arena the crowd buzzing they've seen the four-time champion of this event the all-time Grand Slam champion now in deep deep trouble down two sets down a break and Federer in the changeover had another exchange with Enric Molina the veteran umpire I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but he's been grasping at anything, even yep. saying to Djokovic that he's bouncing Thank the you. balls and has served too much. Plays already. I think he might have been asking him if he was going over the time on some of his serves Thank when he you. goes into all of the bouncing of the ball. Yeah, he's rattled, no question. Sit down, please, quickly. Thank you. Fans getting settled behind Djokovic. Can he stretch the lead and further deflate Roger? So Love you know, it's thrilling to watch Federer win titles with his unbelievable flair and talent. It's also compelling, though, to watch a great champion in trouble yep. and have to find answers. And this is about as much trouble as Roger's been in at a major. This is not Tomas Burdich or Alejandro Faya on the other side. Djokovic has been rock yeah. solid mentally. He really only. has. And he, Djokovic came off the ropes to beat Federer at the U.S. Open to come from match point down in that match. Just like the second set, he went way back on that return. He hasn't done that for a while. This was the same game he broke, you know, after he got broken in the second set. Right, Brian, good point. Well, he's certainly not going to be waving any flags anytime soon as Roger Federick. I mean, we know that. Well, he's going to try to will himself back into this. But Djokovic is... Continuing to spot serve well. That time taking a big one up the middle, which he's kind of used that as a surprise tactic. He's gone to the wide serve a lot in the deuce court. But he's continuing to think and he's continuing to make adjustments. But his strategy has been spot on tonight. Let us for service. You know, on 
to me, That's Chris. Right. It's his strategy is, you know, sort of like a West Coast offense kind of strategy. He's hurting Federer from all parts of it. He's smothering him. He's not hitting one shot big, but everything is rock solid. Everything is percentages. It's ball control. Yeah, totally. More similar kind of game he's playing to the kind of game that Andre Agassi played down here to, to such success for many years, particularly on this surface. And a really controlling the center of the court. Not as much power off both wings and better movement, but that same kind of smothering of the opposition. Djokovic once again passes one of the tests in this match from Love 30. Wins four straight and builds the lead to 3-1. Patrick, Andre would call it going to work on every point. Yep. Uh, Just yep. not playing loose points and hitting the ball hard to spots. And that's what he's done, Brad. And he's, you know, the numbers, you look at his numbers for Djokovic, they don't jump out as anything that impressive. Just 23 winners, more errors, even 26. Is the line. But Patrick, to me, Djokovic is consistently hitting a much heavier oh, ball. No question about it, Brad. And this is the first time he's really gone to a shot that he uses a lot, actually, against other players the backhand slice drop shot from the baseline. Yeah, his groundies are bigger and heavier and, and just coming through the court more than Federer's. Federer just hasn't been able to make it more about Pushing shot on. making and more about athleticism and variety and Djokovic has been the reason that he hasn't been able to do that. We've seen glimpses of the genius of Federer but we've seen him just being sort of battered down, beaten down by this relentless attack. Yannickon wondering Rogers running out of answers in time now. 13, 15. There's another example. A solid, aggressive return right down the middle. Doesn't look like anything spectacular, but that it's it's just been smothering Federer. And I also think it's been the Thank relentless you. pressure of Djokovic not afraid of the Federer forehand. And if you can make progression there, that's when you can beat Roger. He has to hold, maintain contact, and hope that he can create the break or the Djokovic gets tight. Game Federer. <laughs> Only his fifth ace. Djokovic still in command of this third set. Rafael Nadal's presence down under, not a factor. Nadal beaten in this court 24 hours ago. He said that would play into the head of both players, yeah. knowing that the great champion going for the Rafa Slam would not be waiting in the championship on Sunday. It could still be Andy Murray if he can beat Ferrer. That would be a, a tall order, but he felt that gave added weight to this semifinal. Djokovic serves at 3-2. So we've seen a lot of extra special things in tennis and in men's tennis in the last eight years, Chris, with the domination of Federer and then Nadal. 
But uh, we may be seeing something really special coming up here because uh, Djokovic can close this out. And as Darren Cahill talked about early on, the opportunity of sort of the start maybe of the changing of the guard is upon us. That's it all. With Andy Murray right there with Djokovic now. And we will have very likely a major final without Federer and without Nadal. Winners of 21 of the last 23 major titles, those two. Nobody writing Federer obits just no, yet. No, 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 definitely not. And this match is not over yet. See a lot more 15. shots like that, though, from Federer in the last 35, 40 minutes. He's a little bit flat-footed and, and missing. There doesn't seem to be much confidence in his ground game right now, consistently. A lot more sweat in the face than you're used to seeing from Federer. If you think that Roger is a little bit tired, that's when that backhand, that's what Rafa does to him. You know, yep. you get a little tired, that shot just wears you down, hitting it up there. Well, I think Djokovic is stuck with his game plan. He's That's been part of it, but he's been, he's, he's played his game, his style, a different style than the, the one that Nadal plays, but it's worked. Trots back to the box. Doesn't want to miss this moment if it's going to happen. No. Winter X Games 15 starting Thursday on ESPN2. Noon Eastern time. The slope style. Men's elimination. Snowmobile freestyle elimination at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Sean White and the snowboard half pipe. Winter X on ESPN and ESPN2 starting on Thursday. Well, here's a second serve. And, you know, Federer was handcuffed there, Chris. And, you know, part of his more aggressive mentality was to try to step up and run around back live now the first point of this game but I think that's where Djokovic has taken out him out of the comfort zone he just sort of floated that backhand back remember we talked about at the beginning of the match I was he wanted to be more aggressive to step in but Djokovic has worn him down clean winner on the dropper Djokovic saw Federer recovering that corner. Took his eye off of it. You know, we talked about Roger. He's written so much great history on courts all around the world, but Rod Laver Arena in particular, this beautiful stadium, has been the site of some tremendous highs and some deep lows as well. The four titles that he's won, people like Rod Laver here to witness them. Undoubtedly career highs, but he's also had some crushing losses here. The loss to Safin in the semifinals, 05 after he had a match point. The loss here to Djokovic three years ago. 
The loss to Nadal when he was the big favorite and Rafa not at 100% outplayed badly in the fifth set left in tears. So it's been in the scene of a lot of drama and emotion. Both extremes for Rafa. Yeah. And then coming back last year and winning it. Yep. Full dominating team. Murray in the final. But Novak Djokovic has come to play tonight and he's just pounded away relentlessly. His bread and butter tennis has just been more solid tonight than Roger Federer's. Can Djokovic hold serve two more times? Djokovic hold his nerve here. He's been yeah. so cool. That's the only, that's the last question to be asked. I mean, really, he's thoroughly outplayed Federer. I was asking it hypothetically. Yeah. Do you have an no. opinion on that? Uh, I, I, I'm, Thank you. I want to see. Okay. I mentioned that, that was popping into my head in the last five minutes or so. I think. I think part of what's helped him play this well tonight, though, Chris, and let me let me try to answer that, because I do think he can, is that he's matured a lot. He still can be a little rough around the edges sometimes with the ball bouncing and the frustration that he shows. But he's he's come a long way in the maturity department, even since he won this title a few years ago. He's had his moments with other players. He does. He's had his moments with the press, with the fans. Thank you. Nice by the ball kid. In him. 15 -0. Because doubt could begin to creep in the head of Djokovic if Federer can get back on level terms in the third. He went after the second serve. He hit a line with the backhand, and he was rock solid in that rally. He sure was, because Federer hit some good, clean, aggressive shots there, but he just couldn't push Djokovic back. He couldn't get him off balance. And finally, the unforced error comes off the backhand wing. Djokovic very cool and calm. An incredible mental effort tonight. That's good. Oh. See, he hasn't let those kind of shots rattle him. And that, that happens to a lot of players. You see the Federer just coming up with a brilliant return. Federer's been able to do this, but he just hasn't been able to string these kind of shots together. Nice. 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 Steady, 
not good enough at that point as Federer comes up with the big inside out forehand. And this crowd will roar if Federer can get the break right here. They're already roaring. Thank you. Please. <laughs> that is Are you kidding? Unbelievable. He reached back, and that may have not been his biggest serve in the MPH department, but to hit 124 out wide. On break point? He would have no chance to have hit that serve throughout m most, if not an entire year last year, the way he was serving. And comes right back with a good serve and an aggressive forehand. He has played with no fear in this match tonight. Stuck to his guns of going on the attack. He's got himself a chance now to be one game away. Sokovic has had. Thank you. Bye, please. the Djokovic camp out of their seats. He's only had four aces in the match. Two just monster ones in this game. He laid his first serve in there that little and then was a little defensive on his first shot. Yeah, he did throw a change up in there. Challenge for Federer. Left center service line, Bo was called in. It's a big use of the challenge and a bad miss for the lines person at a moment like this in the match. Not really that close. Thank goodness we have the challenge. You bet. the second serve on the forehand but on that last swing Djokovic have another ace up his sleeve on this break point Oh, <laughs> 
dead just yet. Anna Kong stone faced in the coach's box. Miracle can breathe again. Your <laughs> man has life. Djokovic will change his racket. And take a drink. Came up with a lot in that game. He spiked the bottle, by the way, after taking a drink and heads back out. Federer up ready to serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Quiet, please. So many quality shots and so much effort and energy to get back on serve. Cannot afford any dip now. Please. Too, Patrick, oh, you know, absolutely. you're up 4 3, you're trying to put Federer away. You hit a couple aces in the game that end up getting broken to collect yourself. Go right back to taking big cuts. Yeah, well, he's, he's reminding himself how he got here, and that's by going for his shots and being aggressive. And it's hard, very hard, to keep doing it when you can see the finish line. Let's for service. away from the Australian Open final. Thank you. And Roger really up against it now. Earlier in the set, Federer fought back from low 40 to 30 40, but could not erase the third break point. Please.
Roger Federer and Rod Laver Arena. Back with the court was Green. He won his first title here in 2004. Talked about the loss to Saf in the following year. Came back and won it in 2006. There was the gutting loss. 6-2 to Rafa. Consoled by Nadal a couple years ago. And then reclaiming the title. It's, of course, the one Grand Slam title that Roger Federer holds. But his grip is very, very tenuous right now as Djokovic serves for this match. It's been since 2003, Patrick, since Federer has not had one it's held four major one of titles majors, right. in his possession. That's right. Think about that. Almost eight years. Oh. Law 15. We asked the last service game, did Djokovic get tight? He really didn't. Federer took the game from him. Only his third double. has really let him down yeah. as the onslaught and Djokovic has taken a physical toll. <laughs> Boy, what a difference a first serve can make, huh? Djokovic has been able to count on that to get him out of some jams. He's two points away. Fitting perhaps as he fist pumps his box that the Djokovic serve delivers him to this moment. Perhaps a point away from a victory that could signal the beginning of the shift the top men's tennis. Let's for service. Thank you. toughest. Biggest and his best serves have come when it's mattered most. 